My name is Benjamin Gray, and you're at Popularity. The EP was recently released in June. How do you feel the response has been so far? Um, it's been really exciting. Um, I, uh, you know, we made the record very small. Um, we did it in like eight or nine days at our own studio and everything, so uh, we didn't know that it was going to be um, as well received as it was. So it was it was really really thrilling. Um, and uh, I'm just glad I've been relieved more than anything, you know. <laughs> Can you pick a couple of highlights about the record and tell us what they mean to you? Uh, absolutely. Um, I would say that um, the biggest highlight for me was um, on the uh, I'd say the Sky and I on track six. We, um, you know, uh, originally we weren't even going to put it on the record because um, we had already made the date to go in and record all the music, and uh, we had five songs. And then when uh, we were just rehearsing one night, that song just sort of came out of nowhere. And uh, we were just like, oh, we have to do this. Like, we have to put this on the record. And so it became sort of like this mad dash to, to finish it and, and record it and get it ready. And then um, when, uh, when Davey Attic was in town, I had written a part that I thought would be like perfect for him to sing, but I never really dreamed that he would. Um, and I just said one night, I was like, hey, man, like, what, are you, what are you doing tomorrow? Like nothing. I was like, why don't you uh, come in and, and sing on this song? And he said, perfect. And so it, he did, and it was really, really great. And that became such a fun thing for us because a song that originally was not going to be on the record became sort of the coolest recording that we had ever done. And um, it all happened in our own studio um, with us and for like zero dollars. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing was pretty cool for us. What was it like to work with Davey and Jade of AFI, and what do you think is the most important thing that you learned from each of them? Um, let's see. Uh, it's, working with both of them is very different. Um, you know, with Davey, it was just I had written a part, and then he, he came in and did it, and uh, he kind of changed it a little bit. Um, so he obviously put his stamp on it, but uh, he it was really just so easy and cool and fun, and it took like 20 minutes and it was done, and, and then we went and got vegan food, so that was, that was its own experience. And then with Jade, um, he and I, he and I had met, had messed around with, with songs before, um, but while he was in Japan, we sent him, like, all the stems for the song and just kind of trusted him to do whatever he wanted with it, um, just because he's so experienced and great. Uh, with electronic music, I just, you know, it's not really even a leap of faith because you just know that it's going to be unbelievable. Um, so he sent it back three days later with like, all of these crazy layers and all this stuff, and, you know, it just took the track to such a different level. So, I mean, I would say to work with both of them, it was incredibly easy um, and, and exciting because, you know, it's rare that people get to do that, especially an unsigned band. And um, I think as far as what you can learn from those guys is that how they conduct their business and how they deal with people no matter what level they're on. Um, they're really the nicest and, and most respectful artists that I've ever, really ever met. Um, so that's pretty much the best thing about them too is no matter what level, whether they were starting or now that, you know, that they sell millions of records, they, they still treat people the same. And, uh, it's pretty, pretty, um, it's, it's a golden rule thing. So <laughs> what you learn in preschool is basically what those guys are doing now. How do you feel that you've changed musically and personally throughout the creation of the record? Um, let's see. I would say, um, personally, the, the four of us are, are dangerously close to each other now. I mean... Four of his friends, and now it's like this, this really intense bond, and uh, it's, it's it's great. You know, I mean, I, I'm into it. I, it's just that it was it, it's like kind of being through war. I mean, we had no money going in to make the record, um, and you know, we wanted to make it as big as possible, but it's kind of hard when you don't have you know fifty thousand dollars to do a record, um, and you don't have more than two weeks to do it as well. So. Um, 
you know, we we all sort of been through war, so we're extremely close. And musically, um, you know, I think I think the songs are just more focused. I think that we've kind of figured out what Scarlet Grace sounds like, and we know exactly what we do, what we want to do from here on out. Um, you know, we know whose voices work well together. We know what kind of harmonies we like. We know what kind of swells we like. We know what kind of uh, modulations and changes we like to do. Um, so um, throughout that process, I mean, just the four of us really know what we are. So um, this record was sort of our thesis statement for everything that's to come. Which song did you find the most complex and challenging to create? Um, most complex. Uh, most complex is definitely going to be uh, Fancy Blood, which is the second song. Um, it's the most complex. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of textures and layers, and um, you know, there, there's at one point I think like 70 tracks <laughs> of things happening. Um, which is pretty lavish because, you know, we were recording it, like, in this really tiny place, so, like, it's ridiculous to juggle that many sounds, but, like, we just, we just kept adding stuff because everybody kept getting ideas, and then Jade sent stuff, and then, like, that gave us more ideas, and then, you know, there's a point of the song where there's, like, eight or nine harmonies happening at once, um, and it was really, it was kind of wild, and, and it was um, a tight road back. It was so tough to make, but um, in the end, it was the most gratifying because at first, it's like we don't know if we're going to be able to pull off this song. There's like this dancey element, and then it turns into like this straight ahead rock chorus, and then there are two breakdowns on top of each other. It's like Inception. <laughs> it's like, what is going on? Um, but um, in the end, I mean, we're just so happy in the mixing room that like we took this chance on this song that was so eccentric and it turned out to be one of the best songs of the album. So. What would you say is the biggest challenge that you face right now? Right now. Um, I think right now for us, we we just want to continue to be able to surround ourselves with uh, with good people and people who, who get what we do and, and have our best interests. Um, you know, uh, the last month, and the next coming months are, are all about, like, assembling a team together for us. Um, but we've been doing this long enough to where we are very uh, wary of what, of who's out there and who who really has our best interests in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we come from, I mean, we've been a band for like four years or five years now, and um, we've been doing it DIY since the beginning, so we're very used to that. But as things are getting kind of, here for us, we, um, you know, it becomes sort of obvious that there has to be more people involved, um, but we are just very, very careful. So, I mean, the biggest challenge is that, you know, we know how to make Scarlet Grey records and how to make the songs, so that's not so much what we're, we're ner- nervous about. We're nervous about bringing on new people. Really, I don't know where along the way uh, pop music became synonymous with a guilty pleasure because we don't feel that way but basically we want to musically at least at least in one facet is prove that pop music doesn't have to be saccharine and gross and about taking tequila shots and that kind of thing it's like we pop used to be really cool and dangerous and it just happened to embrace big melodies and harmonies and vocals and we we're students of pop music, whether it's 60s Brit pop or Michael Jackson. It's like, if the song is good and big and cool, it's like it doesn't have to be something that you like. You know, turn down your volume at a red light if you don't want people to hear it. Um, as far as pop music goes, we're trying to we're trying to bring it back in a way where pop rock isn't sort of the redheaded stepchild of rock and roll and of music. Um, and also, you know, we're also trying to do is build up a community 